Humans have been listening for aliens for over 80 years now. And what have we found? In the last video, we talked about Ohio State's Big Ear Project, which detected the most notable signal yet in our search for extraterrestrial life, the WOW signal back in 1977. So let's talk about it. Imagine you're a curious astronomer sitting at your desk reviewing a printout of data Yes, it was the 70s, an actual physical piece of paper that had printed out data. And there's a signal on it that catches your attention so much that you actually take out your pen, circle it, and write next to it, wow. Well, that's what happened to astronomer Jerry Amon, who was reviewing the big ear data. The signal was so strong and intense that it captured the attention of scientists worldwide. Now, while this signal obviously really stood out to Amon, who was familiar with this type of printout, to us looking at it, it's a little confusing why this is just so remarkable. Let's look at the view of the full page of the data. These different columns are different wavelength bands, and the numbers and letters in each row correspond to the signal strength at that period in time. So these letters are not some signal that we received from extraterrestrial life, it's just a way of encoding the data and showing that this was a really strong signal. If we translate this alphanumeric output into this graph of signal strength over time in that wavelength channel, you can see why this signal really jumped out. The peak of the signal, indicated by the letter U on the printout, was actually 30 standard deviations above background. Now in this graph, it looks like the signal rises in strength, reaches a peak, and then fades away, but that's actually just due to the way the telescope was moving and is not an intrinsic part of the signal. Basically, the Big Ear Telescope looked at any given point in space for 72 seconds in time. So over that 72 seconds, we're seeing the telescope rotate in, fully receive the signal, and then rotate away from receiving that signal. Before that full 72 seconds, the signal was basically continuous. There's no indication that the signal was modulated, like amplitude modification of AM radio signals, over that 72 seconds. Think more of like a loud blast than like a radio broadcast. So we have this very strong continuous signal, but what was the Big Ear actually measuring here? The Big Ear was a radio telescope, so it was detecting radiation, photons, that were in that range of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is a great place to look because scientists had actually previously proposed that if civilizations wanted to attempt to communicate, they might do so at a frequency of 1420 megahertz, which is a radio frequency. This frequency is so significant because it's associated with an emission line of hydrogen, which is the most common element in the universe, so a civilization might think that other civilizations would think to look there. And guess what frequency the wow signal was at? Okay, technically it was 1420.4556 megahertz, but that 50 kilohertz difference could be explained by a Doppler shift based on relative motion between the source and us. So this was a very strong narrowband signal located at a frequency that might be universally known, sus. So obviously astronomers tried to detect this source again. Now due to some peculiarities of the Big Ear Telescope, they didn't know exactly where the source was, but they did know it was from one of two small regions located in the constellation Sagittarius. The Big Ear tried to detect the signal again, as did many other larger and more sensitive radio telescopes, including the Very Large Array, and yes, that is the actual name of an actual telescope. <laughs> Now, astronomy is no stranger to mysterious signals that we don't quite understand yet. The universe loves to throw crazy shit at us and we just try and figure it out. Famously, when pulsars were first discovered, they were nicknamed little green men and extraterrestrial life was an early hypothesis until we learned more and discovered this whole new class of objects. But no such astronomical explanation has arisen yet to explain this wow signal. Naturally, astronomers have searched for anything in that region of the sky that could be a possible source for this signal, especially sun-like stars. They might have civilizations like our own. It's a harder task than you might think. Even though this is a very small region of the sky, there's still a lot of sources there, and in fact, this is still an ongoing search. Just in 2020, there was one sun-like star, this guy, there are too many stars to give them all catchy names, sorry, <laughs> was identified as a possible source for the wow signal. But a 2022 radio telescope campaign observing that star found no signals of interest. So the wow signal is of remarkable intensity and duration located in a narrowband region near one of the most likely cosmic communication channels, and it has no known astrophysical source. Oh my God, aliens, maybe. I mean that literally, maybe. The hypothesis that extraterrestrial life was the source of the wow signal has not been ruled out, but neither has it been confirmed. 
The key point here is that the wow signal was a one-off detection. Without being able to repeat the detection to identify the source, there's just not really that much we can say. It's a single data point, and that doesn't have a lot of information to offer. And there are other hypotheses besides aliens. It could have been a telescope glitch, or some sort of Earth-based interference, or military technology, or some as-of-yet-unknown astrophysical phenomenon. I know this may be an unsatisfying answer, believe me, I know. I would give, like, a lot to be able to explain what the source of the wow signal was. But for now, we have to accept what we do know, which was that there was a strange and tantalizing signal detected back in 1977, which we still cannot explain. We'll finish with this fun thought for you. Back in 2012, for the 35th anniversary of the wow signal detection, we actually sent a message back. A collection of, and I hate to say this, tweets <laughs> were compiled into a message along with some videos and encoded as a radio transmission. That transmission was blasted out at high power by the Arecibo telescope, RIP, towards three sun-like stars, the closest of which is 41 light years away. So we may be about, oh, a century away from hearing back. So I hope you were wowed by this signal just as much as Jerry Amon was, and I hope you learned a little bit of something. I will see you again soon. Bye.